I realize it's Father's Day, but uh, God's laid it on my heart to uh, share a word from Jesus' mama with y'all. All right, now, uh, there at a wedding banquet, you know, the one where Jesus turned the water into wine. Listen to what Mary tells the servants there. In John 2, 5, she says, uh, this out of verse three, that reads, His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. It's very simple. Whatever he says to you, do it. And, y'all, that's what we need to be doing. Whatever Jesus says to us, we need to be doing it. All right? So listen to what Jesus has said to us. And he said this to all of us. In Matthew five sixteen. he says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. All right, this morning I want to tell you all about a man who did that. He did that for me. He took what Jesus told him to do, and he did it. And he's still doing it. He does it every day. I want to share with you all what kind of effect Brother Ronnie Lewis, letting his light shine, has had on my life. And not only on my earthly life, but on my eternity. All right. So uh, Tiffany and I, we started dating. And uh, I met Ronnie. And from the start, me and Ronnie, we hit it off. See, neither one of us can sit still. All the time, we got to be doing something, just all the time. And uh, well, May the 12th, 2012, me and Tiffany, we got married, and I moved over to 77 onto the property with Ronnie, and that took our relationship to the next level. We uh, started doing all kind of stuff together once we got, once me and Tiffany got married. We, uh, Ronnie would go out and do little side jobs, and uh, all right. Ronnie would go out and do little side jobs, and uh, I'd go help him if I wasn't working. And uh, this whole time now, I, had, I wasn't going to church anywhere. Me and Tiffany were dating. I wasn't going to church anywhere. Me and her got married. I really wasn't going to church anywhere. And Anyway, sometimes I'd come visit this church with her, and I'd sit through a service. And, you know, it really didn't, it didn't affect me. I'd come sit in a church service, and I'd get up and leave just like I had went and seen a movie. It didn't really matter to me because I hadn't had a heart change yet. All right, I was the kind of guy that thought it was normal to ride around with a cooler full of beer in the back of your truck. You know, I just thought that's what everybody did. I thought you went to work, you get off work, and you drink. That's what I thought was, you know, what it was about. And uh, I revolved my life around that. If there wasn't going to be alcohol there, I wasn't going to be there, and I'd plan for that. And I just wouldn't. And everywhere I went, I had a cooler full of beer in the back of my truck. Well, now, everywhere I go, I have in my truck is my Bible. That's what I got with me. Everywhere I go. All right, so let's get back to me and Ronnie. Now, because we don't need to talk about beer in church too long. But anyway, um, so, uh, all right, I had been around some church people before. And, you know, I've been around the kind of people that they did right while they was in the building. But when they got to the house, it wasn't nothing about them right. Well, Ronnie, he was the farthest thing from that. I could tell that his steps were ordered by the Lord. If he did it at church, he did it at home. And if he did it at home, he did it at church. It was the same thing. And uh, the more I was around him, the more I could see that light shining out of him. And I could feel it, and I wanted to be around him. He would talk to me about the ways God had blessed him. And he would tell me how real our God is. And he would uh, just let me know how much he cares about us and how much he does for us. He would tell me how he had blessed him with his family. He had blessed him with property. He had blessed him with finances. And he would tell me all this stuff. And I'd never been around nobody like that before. And I was like, man, look at this. You know, this is something new to me. And I wasn't used to that. And at the time, it was just a one-sided conversation. And now I can have conversations with people like that. But anyway, I didn't even realize that God loved me. And I didn't realize that he wanted to have a relationship with me. I didn't know that. I didn't know those things. But what I did realize was whatever Ronnie had, that's what I wanted. I wanted that. Whatever he had, that's what I wanted. And I told myself, I said, well, I'm going to get me a Bible and I'm going to read it. So I'm going to tell you all how disconnected I was from the Bible and God and all that stuff. My Bible was at my daddy's house in a tote in a closet. That's where it was. And uh, I went over there and I got the Bible and I was going to start reading it. And I had decided that. If I read this thing and everything lined up the way I thought it should be, and you know what, I thought, well, this is okay, you know, then that's what I was going to do. I was going to get baptized. Well, y'all, little did I know, I didn't know I was, you know, I thought, well, I'll just get baptized. Everything will be all right. I didn't know I was going to start living for God. 
You know, I didn't know it was going to change my whole world. And I had been baptized before when I was younger at a church camp, but I was young and there were older kids there and they were being baptized. And, you know, it was just, it was emotions. It was just me being like, hey, I want to do what they're doing. You know, I didn't know what was going on. But anyway, I started reading my Bible and I started in the New Testament because I knew enough to know that, you know, we're living under the New Covenant. I knew enough to know that. And, y'all, I was, I had done made up my mind I was going to read, but I was going to kind of be lazy about it, too, because I'm a truck driver. And, you know, we go on four or five-hour routes. And I said, you know, I can download an app on my phone. I can listen to this thing. There ain't no, really no sense in me having to read it all. Well, listen to what happened. I started listening to it, and I, it excited me so much I wanted to take that Bible I had went and got out of that closet, and I wanted to reread what I had listened to because I was interested. I'm kind of a thorough person. I want to. You know, if I'm going to do this thing, I want to make sure I know all about it. That way I'll make sure I can do it right. Well, there was a guy named Brandon Dunford. He was my partner at the time, and uh, he was riding with me, and he uh, he would pick at me, and he'd say, man, you ain't just reading that thing. You're studying it. You know, you're trying to memorize what it says on every page because I would tell him about it whenever I'd get done. And, y'all, every day whenever I'd get to work or wherever I was, I couldn't wait to open that Bible up and just see what it had, you know, what it had for me that day. And little by little, I started I started becoming a better person, just a little bit at a time. And uh, so little bit at a time, I wasn't noticing it, you know. I started becoming a better person and a better husband. I had stopped drinking all the time, and I had stopped cussing all the time. Y'all, I had a bad mouth on me, <laughs> terrible. And uh, I had started attending church on a regular basis. But what I didn't realize at the time was I had started falling in love with that Bible. Listen to what John 1.14 says. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Where it says word there, that W is capitalized. All right, if you take your Bible and any time it talks about God or Jesus and it refers to them as he, it capitalizes it. Just like right there where it capitalizes that word. What I was falling in love with, y'all, wasn't this book, wasn't these pages. It was Jesus. I was falling in love with Jesus. All right, so I'm reading my Bible, and I'm making good progress. I've done got all the way through the New Testament. I'm done with that. Woo, I know what applies to me. Okay? And I'm getting pretty deep in the Old Testament now. And I told you all I had started attending church. Well, Brother Tatum was our pastor here at the time, and Brent came, and he was a visiting preacher. And uh, me and Brent didn't really know each other at the time. He was living in Covington, and we were living here. And, we, you know, we'd hung out a couple times, but we didn't really know each other. And there ain't no way he could have knew where I was because I hadn't told him. But he came and he preached a message, and he preached, today is the day to be saved if you want to get saved. And, y'all, I, I sat right back there on that back pew on this side of the church, and I gripped that pew so hard that my knuckles turned white. I just had a hold of that thing because it was something pulling me. Like, come down here to the front, boy. You, you know what you need to do. But I was so set on it, I want this thing to go my way, that I wouldn't, you know, I wasn't realizing that, hey, I just need to do what the Holy Spirit's wanting me to do here. I just need to come on down there. It's probably fingerprints in that pew back there. I had a hold of that thing. But anyway, so uh, I was slowly but surely realizing as I read my Bible, and I continue because that morning I didn't come down there, that it ain't going to be my way. It's going to be his way. That's the way it's going to be. In John 14 and 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So it's going to be his way. There ain't no doubt about that. So anyway, so I keep on, I'm reading my Bible, and I'm, I'm still, it's my way, even though I have realized that it's going to be his way. And I'm reading, and uh, Brent, he comes back, and he preaches again. And y'all, he preached a good message, just like Brent always preaches, always preaches a good message. But this time at the altar call, he said something that hit me right here, hit me hard. And uh, so he just got done with his message. I'm gripping the pew again, just like last time, just got a hold of that thing, and I got my eyes closed back there, and I ain't sure these was his exact words, but it went something like this, what he said at the altar call. He said, have you been saved this morning, and have you been baptized in his name? And if you were to leave this morning and have a car wreck and die, would you go be with Jesus? Do you know him this morning? And y'all, I closed my eyes, gripping that pew, and I thought, I do know him this morning, but I hadn't, I hadn't obeyed him. I know him, but I hadn't obeyed him. Listen to what Acts 2.38 says. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So, y'all, I turned loose of that pew, 
And I didn't run down here. I know Levi said something about running the aisles. I didn't run down here, but I walked as fast as I could, and I walked pretty fast. <laughs> and uh, Brent come around, and he prayed for everybody, and he got to me, and he said, do you want to be baptized this morning? I said, yes, sir, absolutely. I want to be baptized. I said, but look, Brent, I ain't trying to be rude. I want your daddy to do it. That's who I want to do it. And Brent said, that's fine, that's fine. I'm going to be in the water anyway. I ain't missing out on nothing. <laughs> so, Because uh, Casey Wade was getting baptized that morning. And Ronnie, he, he was able to baptize me, y'all. And it tickled me to death that the man that introduced me to Jesus was able to baptize me that morning. And whenever I came up out of that water on August the 24th, 2014, my whole world changed. It was like I was living in a brand new world. And uh, it was almost like some scales had fell off my eyes. I could see things clearer now. And the things that I used to do and say, they just made me sick at my stomach now. Just tore me up, those things that I used to say and do. And one thing stands out to me that I used to say. I used to make comments like, if somebody said anything about God, I would make comments like uh, like this. You know, I'm a good old boy. I'd do anything for anybody. Surely to goodness God wouldn't send me to hell for that. If you got a flat tire, I'll stop and help you. If you need help with anything, I'd help you. you know, surely he wouldn't do nothing, you know, send me to hell for being a good fella. Well, fact of the matter is, y'all, that's where I was headed. That's exactly where I was headed. Listen to what Matthew 7, 23, this is what Jesus said now. He said, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. See, y'all, I was a good fella, but I was missing one thing. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I didn't know him. I didn't have that relationship with him. Why in the world would the king of glory invite me to come live in his home with him if he don't know me? Why would he do that? You know, sure, the Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 2, do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Well, y'all, it says don't forget to entertain them. You know, invite them into your home, have a meal, something like that. Don't say invite them to come live with you. So if you ain't had that heart change, don't expect God to invite you to come live with him in his home. Don't don't expect that. And, you know, I believe that that, that trick right there is a good trick of the devil to make us think that we don't need a relationship with God, that we're good enough on our own. But we've already talked about he is the way, the truth, and the life. If he's the way, he's the only way, y'all. He is the only way. And I am so thankful that I know him this morning, and I want to close with this. This world will tell you that God is not speaking anymore. They'll tell you that. I promise you they'll tell you that. Even some churches might tell you that, that he don't speak anymore. They want to take him and just... Shut him up in that Bible. If we want to hear him, you know, we'll look in that Bible. That's what they want to say. But, well, I'm here to tell you all something different this morning. Brent had asked me to speak because it was Father's Day. And, uh, y'all, I did what I always do. I got real nervous, just like y'all see up here this morning, wiping this sweat off my hands and just nervous walking around. But anyway, this is what I do whenever I'm going to speak. I take an index card, and I start writing Scripture on them. Dustin Randall right here, this is my partner, he comes to see me this morning, he can testify to that, I'll write down scriptures, and uh, you know, I'm blessed to have him as a partner, because he listens to me practice this stuff, y'all, he's probably listened to this 10 or 12 times, he probably knows it better than I do, <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, I'll write down scriptures on the card, and I had wrote down Matthew 5, 16, and uh, y'all, that's the verse I read at the front where it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That Matthew 5, 16, I wrote it on that little card. And me and Dustin, they went to work one night. We're coming around the yard in a big truck. We don't have a trailer hooked to us, and we're looking for a trailer. And uh, there's a security guard out there named Stanley. And I stopped, and I asked him, I said, I got out of the truck. I left the door open. Dustin's still in the truck. And I said, Stanley, have you seen my trailer? He said, no, I've not seen your trailer. And uh, me and Stanley, now, we have conversations about We talk about God and church and stuff like that. And, you know, I, after he told me he didn't see his trailer, I just turned and walked off. And he said, hey, I got something I want to share with you. And I said, all right. Now, Stanley, he goes to church in uh, Lawrenceville, y'all. He uh, he said, I was sitting in church last Sunday, and this, this scripture popped in my head. Uh, I want to know, does it mean something to you? He said, I want to read it to you. I said, all right, read it to me. He said, uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. And, y'all, me and Stanley talk, but we don't be out there on the McLean yard hugging or nothing like that, you know. I, I do that at church mostly. But uh, anyway, uh, I said, I just I just grabbed him. I said, Stanley, come here and give me a hug. And I hugged him. And he was like, man, what's going on? I was like, thank you. Thank you so much.
And he's like, what is it? And I said, God just confirmed something to me. He just confirmed something to me. And he's like, man, we're excited. You know, I'm telling y'all, that is the greatest feeling in the world. It's amazing to me that God, the creator of the universe, was letting me know that, hey, whatever I got to say up here this morning, it's okay. You know, maybe somebody needs to hear this, what I got to say. And, you know, if Stanley wouldn't have opened his mouth and told me that that got laid on his heart to tell me about that scripture, you know, I wouldn't have never known. And, you know, he didn't have to do that. Stanley didn't have to do that. And Ronnie didn't have to tell me about God and how good he was. Neither one of them had to do it, but they did. So I want to encourage y'all this morning, if the Lord lays it on your heart to share with Jesus with somebody, to tell them about him, just go ahead, just go ahead and share it with them. You don't know what kind of effect it may have on their life. Heck, it might just affect their eternity, just like Ronnie Lewis has affected mine. Thank you all.